stupid ass dude. It's too nice to me, right? Y'all been here? Yeah. <laughs> dude, is he the only one who works here? Because it's starting to fucking burn. A woman is missing, and now her friend, friend, her friend is in jail. Evil exists in this world. Trust no one. This is the story of Morena Rogers, a beautiful, jovial, ambitious woman who fell in with the wrong crowd and was murdered then ditched in desert. The story takes us to Las Vegas, Nevada, a popular vacation destination known as the entertainment capital of the world, boasting large luxurious casino hotels, a buzzing nightlife with non-stop adult entertainment branding at Sin City. The Bellagio Conservatory and Botanical Gardens each season transform to a new experience. Free iconic shows along the Las Vegas Strip such as the Bellagio Fountain Show and the Mirage Volcano Show. Top-notch restaurants and eateries with fine wines and food galore. Morena grew up in a small, close-knit family in Seattle, Washington, where she was taught the importance of taking time out to do the things she loved, the power of teamwork, the value of education and hard work, and their significance in helping her live a fulfilling life. After graduating Lincoln High School, she went on to pursue her nursing career at the University of Washington Bothell in 2018. She then worked as a medical assistant at the Providence Sacred Heart Medical Center, became a certified phlebotomist graduating Northwest Phlebotomy School in 2022, and later began working as a scrub nurse at the Overlake Hospital Medical Center in April 2023. Morena was always looking for ways to improve herself, so when she saw the opportunity to work remotely and make some extra bucks, she applied and got the job of field agent at the PHP agency in October 2023. Morena was doing pretty well for herself financially, but it was not always that way. She had lost her dad, who was her first superhero, provider, and protector. And although her mom would do the best she could to guide, comfort, and provide for her, her protection was gone. In spite of that, she was determined to continue pursuing her education. But it was challenging, and she was vulnerable. She would meet and open up to people she thought meant her well, but all it takes to throw you off balance or take you out of this world prematurely is meeting one wrong person. And Morena met a few. Like the gang members she associate with is called out here on social media, who were often victims of what comes with that lifestyle themselves. Imitating their behaviors and attitudes as one person pointed out here, and leaving herself open for the consequences of that lifestyle. The boyfriend she met in university, operating less like a boyfriend and more like a pimp, driving her to Las Vegas to engage in prostitution. Her longtime male friend tagging along to see her engage in prostitution, acting less like an old friend and more like her boyfriend's pimp partner. And her girlfriend operating like a top prostitute or bottom B as they call it, making all her prostitution appointments even taking her there and then using that access and opportunity to easily take her life. A woman is missing and now her friend is in jail. We've been speaking with family members and friends all day as there is an effort to find her. Here's what we've learned. This is Morena Rogers, a 23-year-old visiting Las Vegas with friends from the Seattle area. In the early morning hours of December 6th, loved ones say she vanished. Now 19-year-old Sakari Harnden is in the downtown Las Vegas jail with a half million dollar bond facing a kidnapping charge. Harnden is believed to be the last person seen with Rogers. The eight News Now investigators obtained this criminal complaint, which states on December 6th, Harnden held or detained Rogers against her will for the purpose of killing her or inflicting substantial bodily harm. Friends say they believe Rogers had gotten into a car with Harnden the night of her disappearance. So far, no confirmation from police. Harnden also faces a theft charge after police say she stole a Rolex. Roger's family and friends are trying to get the word out about her disappearance on social media. They say she had a good job as a medical assistant, would never leave her family back home in Washington or abandon her dogs, which she brought with her to Las Vegas. They believe the circumstances of her disappearance are no doubt suspicious, suspicious, suspicious. 
On December 4, 2023, 19-year-old Sakari Harnden got into an argument with her friend, 23-year-old Morena Rogers, because Morena caught wind that Sakari had snitched on her own rapper boyfriend, 18-year-old. Yoswa Satawa, also known as EBK Leal Play, causing him to be arrested for double murder. And Morena was telling people in their circle that Sakari was the snitch, and somehow word got back to Sakari. They argued and seemingly resolved the issue, but Sakari was not over it. She had already decided since hearing about it a few weeks prior that Morena had to go. Two men had been shot and killed in California in March 2023. 24-year-old Andrea Lee Jones and 29-year-old Jacob Haywood Thomas, who is a rapper known as Jay Black. But it wasn't until May that Iosua was arrested which does indicate that authorities had later gotten some new information. And if you know anything about how snitching is viewed, you know that if word got back to Ioswa that Sakari ran her mouth and is the reason he's sitting in San Joaquin County Jail, it would not end well for Sakari. So Sakari was furious that Marina was talking about it with others and putting her life in danger. So, she decided to put her plan in motion to take Morena out, and she knew just the right person to help with her terrible deed. His name is Chance Comanche. Chance Comanche was a 27-year-old NBA, G League player with the Stockton Kings. According to Chance, he and Sakari met online about a year and a half ago and dated for a few months before ending their dating, but remained in touch. And according to Sakari, Chance is in love with her and would do anything for her. So she reached out to Chance and sure enough, Chance agreed. Chance then reached out to his homie as he called him and his homie Trevion, AKA Trey, agreed to find him some hitters to do it. He told his homie to let his guys know that the offer for the murder is $3,000 to get it done sooner than later. But after a few days of checking in and no one seemed interested, Chance and Sakari decided they would do it themselves. Morena had already began engaging in prostitution since being with her boyfriend Tremaine and becoming friends with Sakari. And she was used to Sakari setting up prostitution dates for her. So Sakari had already told Morena to get to Las Vegas as they both have dates with NBA players where she would make $4,000 in one night. So Morena's longtime friend Garrett drove her and her boyfriend Tremaine in her car to Las Vegas from Washington State on December 1st, 2023 so Morena could engage in prostitution. When they got to Las Vegas, they booked into an Airbnb and Morena shared her location with Sakari. Meanwhile, Chance and Sakari were busy brainstorming ways to commit the murder via the Telegram app, and by December 5th, Sakari thought up the perfect idea. She told Morena to place a sex worker, at which Morena did. She then told Chance to reply to the ad using a TextNow number and gave him the exact wording to say, Chance had arrived in Las Vegas on December 4th as he and his team were scheduled for a game on the eve of December 5th. And they both already decided to use his time in Las Vegas as the perfect opportunity to get the murder done, as there is no better place to murder someone and get away with it than Las Vegas. Or so they thought. Sure enough, Morena responded to Chance and agreed to meet for the $1,000 in exchange for an hour of sexual pleasure. So on December 5th, after Chance's game, Sakari sent a location to Morena for her to meet she and the trick at. And since Morena's longtime friend Garrett was out with her car, she told him to come and take her to meet up with Sakari and a trick for a prostitution date. At around 11.30 p.m., Garrett picked up Morena and dropped her off at the location where Sakari was. Sakari was in her car in the driver's seat and Chance was sitting in the back seat behind the front passenger seat where Morena would be sitting as they had planned. One would wonder why Morena would want to meet up with Sakari and a man she does not know, so late at night for only 1,000 bucks, and especially after having a confrontation just the day before. But Sakari had given Morena the assurance that all was well and they were okay again and was smiling and pretending like they were cool. But Sakari was angry inside, wanted nothing more than for Morena to be gone from this earth, and Morena had no idea. So she continued trusting Sakari. As Morena stepped out of her car and walked over to Sakari's car, Chance was seeing her for the first time, and he thought she does not look like the type of girl Sakari described to him. According to him, 
She did not look like she was about that life. Sakari had apparently stolen a Rolex watch from Morena, which Morena had apparently stolen from one of their client named Gregory, while they were on one of their sex dates in February 2023. And Sakari told Chance that Morena was telling people in their circle that she was going to smoke her Sakari if she did not return her watch. Of course, Chance wouldn't want the love of his life to get killed, so Sakari thought what great story to tell Chance, and Chance bought it. If it was either Sakari or Morena, Morena would have to be gone. When Garrett dropped Morena off, he noticed a man sitting in the back seat and asked Sakari who he was, and Sakari told him he was the trick. But according to Garrett, he thought it was odd that someone who was about to pay for escort services was sitting in the back seat of a car. However, he did not question any further, and Morena got in the car and they drove off. Sakari had planned to get some liquor and then drive to a friend of hers house where they would commit the murder. So they stopped at Exo Liquor Store where Chance stayed in the car, while Morena and Sakari went into the store and purchased some liquor. They then drove to Sakari's friend's house, but when they got there, they realized her friend no longer lived there and had moved out sometime in November. Sakari is familiar with the area and knew that a cul-de-sac was nearby. So she communicated with Chance via the Telegram app and they decided to go to the Col de Sac. When they got to the Col de Sac, Sakari told Morena that the trick wanted to have kinky sex and wanted to tie them both up. Morena had no idea what their real plan was, so she took her clothes off while still sitting in the front passenger seat, then put both hands together to have them tied up. Sakari had secured a bag of plastic zip ties and had it in her car. Chance, who was still sitting in the back seat behind Morena, reached for two of the zip ties and gave them to Sakari, who also took her clothing off. Sakari bound Morena's hands together, then climbed over the center console and began straddling Morena. As she sat on Morena's lap facing her, she placed her hands on the sides of the headrest as if to allow Chance to bind them as well. As Sakari sat with outstretched hands, pretending to have Chance zip-tie them together, Chance took an HDMI cord, placed it around Morena's neck, and began pulling both ends forcefully. And as Morena realized what was happening, she began to struggle to get free. But Sakari was sitting on her zip-tied hands on her lap with her body holding Morena against her seat, while Chance pulled the cord tighter and tighter. There was no way to break free. Within seconds of screaming and kicking, she began to lose breath, and as Chance heard her struggling to breathe, he loosened the cord and gave up on the mission. But Sakari was intent on getting Morena out of here, so she placed both her hands on Morena's neck and squeezed until she was no longer breathing and foamy fluid was coming from her mouth. They then laid her seat back a bit with her still sitting in it looking as if she was sleeping while they began driving around at 3 a.m., searching for a place to dump her body. Sakari was careful to turn Morena's phone off, and a few minutes later turned her own phone off as well. But Chance's phone remained on. They drove for quite some time until they were 20 miles outside Las Vegas at 4.17 a.m., where they found a ditch in a deserted area in Henderson, Nevada. They took Morena from the car, threw her in the ditch and covered her with rocks. They then smashed her phone with rocks and placed it in Sakari's car along with her other belongings. They then drove back to Las Vegas to Chance's hotel room at the M Resort at 6.05 a.m., but not before stopping at a Winco store and purchasing a cooking knife, lemons, limes, oranges, and salt. <sighs> Interesting. Maybe to attempt to wash away their sin? Anyway, they stayed in the hotel room a few hours. Then at 8.50 a.m. Chance left to join his team for a flight out of Las Vegas. And about an hour and a half later at 10.24 a.m., Sakari left the room and went to her car visibly upset and crying, then drove away from the resort at 10.50 a.m. Sakari had gotten a call from Morena's boyfriend Tremaine at around 9.30 a.m., trying to find out where Morena was and why her location was turned off. And after Sakari gave him a lying story that Morena had left in an Uber to go see another trick, he wasn't buying it. Because according to him, Morena always used his Uber account for trips, as she does not have one. So he called up Uber to verify if they had picked Morena up at the location Sakari gave him, and the answer was no. 
They had picked up someone nearby, but it was not Morena. Now Tremaine is furious. He knows Sakari is lying. So he called her back and threatened her that if she did not return Morena, he and Garrett would go get her sister. This was not good news for Sakari. She did not want her little sister involved in any of what was going on, and she was very shaken. But after crying for a while, she came up with a brilliant idea to report Morena missing, as if she really was missing and not dead. So after leaving the M Resort and driving around trying to figure out what exactly to say to police, while also communicating with Chance via the Telegram app about the new development and Chance coaching her on what to say, and after lying to her and Morena's friend at You Love Cherry Garcia via text, pretending not to know Morena's whereabout, Garcia, crash out. Everybody getting all effing emotional and I'm trying to hold it together right now so I can find her. Sakari, I'm trying to hold it together too. It don't help when <laughs> yelling at me and saying they gon' kill me or go find my sisters. Like WTF? Yes, I effed up, but my little sister don't got none to do with that. If he want one of us for her, he can come smoke me right now. I don't care, bro. I'm not a bad guy here. I would have never let her leave me if I would have known this would happen. Garcia, do you know who she was texting or whose Uber she used? Sakari, no. Man, I really don't think I can handle this ONG. This is my fault. I should have never left her. I want to find her, but this is wild bro for real. If n wanna kill me over this, just do it for real. I've never been close with no girl like her in my life. We done been through hell and back, literally, the hardest times of our lives together. And even when we fall off, we make it right back together for real. I was so excited to see her. I would never put her in harm's way on purpose. I hope everyone really knows that. I'm just gonna call the police bro at this point. She called and reported Morena missing at around 2.25 p.m., telling authorities she was drunk, high on ecstasy, and was bipolar, and that she left in an Uber. To go to another prostitution date, she thought it was a great way to cover her tracks, both for Morena's boyfriend as well as the cops, and she thought it would suffice. The next morning, December 7th, Morena's two friends, Summer and Gavin, who were also in Las Vegas were getting worried Morena did not return, so after checking with the people in their circle and no one knew where she was, they decided to report her missing as well. Then her family back in Washington State were also trying to reach her and because they could not, they also reported her missing. Everyone that knew and loved Morena was worried because it was unlike her to not answer or return calls. And thankfully, Authorities were getting multiple missing reports, which prompted them to act quickly and get on it right away. The first thing they did was question Morena's friends Summer and Gavin, who told them Morena met up with Sakari for a prostitution date at 1 a.m. on December 6th and did not return. They described Morena's car to them as a white Mercedes-Benz with Washington license plate, and Gavin told them he was concerned for Morena's safety because Sakari's associates were known to be violent. So since Sakari was the last person who saw her and she had also filed a missing person report, they decided to call up Sakari. They tried reaching Sakari, but she wouldn't answer or respond. They then pinged Morena's phone but received no GPS coordinates because of course Sakari had turned off and crushed Morena's phone. As authorities were out investigating that same day, December 7th, they received a call that a car matching the description of Morena's car was in an area, so they responded at 7 p.m. They found a man driving her car who gave his name as Tremaine McAdams and told them he was Morena's boyfriend. He told them he, Morena, and Garrett all traveled to Las Vegas on December 1st so Morena could engage in prostitution, and they were all staying at the same Airbnb. He told them Morena met up with Sakari to go meet with NBA players and was set to make $4,000 in one night. He told them Morena left the Airbnb at 11.30 p.m. on December 5th and was to return at 9 a.m. on December 6th but never returned. Tremaine also told authorities that Sakari and Morena had an altercation on December 4th because Sakari was upset with Morena for telling others she snitched on her boyfriend Ayosua Satawa. While authorities were at the location, Garrett Comer drove up in a red Cameo Chevrolet with Nevada license plate, and authorities questioned him as well. 
Garrett told authorities he was a childhood friend of Morena and knew her for approximately 15 years. He told them he drove Morena's car to Las Vegas with Morena and her boyfriend Tremaine so Morena could engage in prostitution. And they were all staying at the same Airbnb. He told them he drove Morena to meet with Sakari for a prostitution date with a trick at 1 a.m. on December 6th. And Morena got in the front passenger seat of Sakari's gray Mercedes Benz, while a man, she said, was the trick sat in the back seat behind Morena. He said that when he went to pick up Morena at 11.30 p.m. on December 5th, she showed him a string of text messages on her phone where Sakari had arranged a prostitution double date for $1,000. Garrett also told authorities about the confrontation Sakari had with Morena on December 4th because she heard Morena was telling people in their circle that she was the one who snitched on her boyfriend causing him to be arrested. He told them he believed Sakari was responsible for Morena's disappearance. Everything seemed to be leading back to Sakari, who seemed to be the person who saw Morena last. So after trying to reach Sakari without success, authorities decided to secure an emergency pen authorization, which would help them pinpoint exactly where Sakari was. On December 8, 2023, at around 1.10 a.m., Detectives, along with FBI special agents, located Sakari using the emergency pen and questioned her. Sakari told authorities mostly lies mixed in with a few truths, but authorities were able to quickly verify that she was lying. She told them she and Morena were escorts who provided various services to clients. She told them they both met up with a trick who was also her friend named Chance Comanche on December 6th and was planning to go to his hotel room but decided to meet another trick instead. So they dropped Chance off at a convenience store where he was picked up by one of his friends. She told them Chance was in the NBA G League and was in Las Vegas for a basketball game. She told them Chance was in love with her and would do anything for her. She told them that she and Morena then went to meet the trick and performed oral services and were each paid $500. She told them Morena then left in a black sedan Uber after the date to go on another prostitution date in Summerlin, and she had not seen or heard from her since and all her efforts to reach her were unsuccessful. She showed them the screenshot text message she had gotten from Morena on December 5th where a trick was propositioning her for the same sex date she left in the Uber to go on. She denied having any altercation with Morena on December 4th, but admitted to having a conversation with Morena. Although she could not recall what the conversation was about, she told them she later met up with Chance and the two spent the rest of the night together. She then gave the authorities Chance's phone number. That same day, December 8th, authorities secured a search warrant for Sakari's car. They found an iPhone 11, an iPhone 12, and an iPad in her car. They then secured a digital forensic search warrant for accessing the phone's digital content. And my oh my, were they in for a surprise. The entire murder plot was laid out for them in clear, concise text messages via their Telegram app. The pre-planning phase, where they gonna do it, who is gonna do it, the planning phase, how they gonna do it, and the post-planning phase, what they're going to say if they ever got caught. November 30, 2023, 3.50 p.m. Sakari, hello. 8.24 p.m. Sakari, he replied. At this point, the pre-planning phase was already set in motion. Sakari had told Morena to get to Las Vegas so they both can make $4,000 in one night of sex with NBA players, and she had already asked her NBA G League ex-boyfriend Chance Comanche to find someone to murder Morena for her, and he agreed and had started looking. 9.02 p.m. Chance. He with family right now. He gone tap in later with me and I'ma run it by him. 10.21 p.m. Sakari, okay, Fusho. Let me know. December 1, 2023, 3.47 a.m. Sakari. Shorty sent her location. 8.32 a.m. Chance. It's green. I gave him the baseline info. He gonna hit them and get back. 11.05 a.m. Sakari. What you tell him? 11.08 a.m. Chance. Gave them her full name. SSN. Her IG page. All day. 11.08 a.m. Sakari. She locked out of her IG. She won't be posting on it no more. You got her full name? Tell him here's her car too. 11.10 a.m. Sakari. How you got her full name? 11.11 a.m. Sakari. Oh wait, it's on her Insta, huh?
11 11 a.m. Chance. What her IG? 11 11 a.m. Sakari. She locked out and I think it's private. I don't think that'll help. 11 12 a.m. Chance. I just need the name of it. 11 12 a.m. Sakari. Her name is Morena Rogers. 11 13 a.m. Sakari. Let me check. She stay changing it. 11 14 a.m. Chance. Ghetto ass name. 11 14 a.m. Sakari. Three laughing face emoji. Foul. 2 29 p.m. Sakari. She just got here. 4 27 p.m. Sakari. What's the deal? 5 05 p.m. Sakari. Ye need that dons. 5.07 p.m. Sakari sent Chance Morena's address, which is redacted. 5.07 p.m. Chance, what's the Addy for? 5.07 p.m. Chance, that's where she be staying. There's gonna be hella heads there, though. 5.09 p.m. Sakari, she can pull up to wherever he want her to. I'll tell her go alone, obviously. 5.09 p.m. Sakari. So if he make a WhatsApp, I'ma FaceTime her and tell her to make one, and he can add her WhatsApp. And I'ma just pretend that he's a trick and have her pull up and get it done like that. 5.10 p.m. Chance. You. 5.10 p.m. Sakari becoming impatient. He ain't replied yet still? 5.22 p.m. Sakari. Just keep me updated. 5.30 p.m. Chance. I got you light skin. Keep your head low. I'ma hit you. 5.57 p.m. Sakari. Aight. Thanks. Good luck at your game. 11.17 p.m. Sakari is extremely anxious to murder Morena, can barely allow Chance some room to breathe after his game. None yet? Trying to figure out if I should keep playing friendly with the bitch or if I should say I'm going out of town. Cause she trying to link I'm trying to delay it as long as possible till we can get the done. Our other friends trying to link? I'm only trying to link with them though, not her. So trying to wait to do that till this done with LMAO. 11.18 p.m. Chance. Heard you. I see. 11.20 p.m. Sakari. Yup. Let me know. Whenever they make the WhatsApp, it's good. She said she's down to meet and she, uh, go by herself. I got it in motion. Just need him to add her and have her pull up to make it happen. This Sakari girl is on real demon time. Talking about murdering somebody like it's just a walk in the park. Clearly, Morena wasn't ready for this crowd. December 2, 2023, 12, 12 a.m. chance. My n***a ain't hit me back yet. Like he ain't even opened the telegram sh yet. 3.08 a.m. Sakari. Let me know no. 9.35 a.m. chance. Everything's getting in motion. Patience is a virtue, lol. You good though. 10.54 a.m. Sakari. Yeah. I was awake till 7.30 a.m. I just went to sleep a few hours ago. I'ma go back to sleep for a while. 10.54 a.m. chance. Bet. Be safe. 1.39 p.m. Sakari. I'm a little awake. But what's good? B keep asking me to link. I'm trying to get this over with. Trifling. Imagine she told Morena to come to Vegas so they can get down and make some money and now she's in Vegas and there's no getting down. And Sakari is complaining that she's calling her so they could get down. She is obviously clueless Sakari is still mad at her and not her friend at all. 2.06 p.m. Chance replied. I told my dog the whole plan. He just waiting to run it by them. Worse comes to worse. Tell Shotty you had to dip to Portland on some emergency shed or some. But folks is trying to get it done. 2.09 p.m. Sakari. It's your homie people when he finna ask him. 2.11 p.m. Chance he already hit him. Just waiting for them to hit back. Chance seem annoyed, but imagine your day is consumed with just trying to kill someone. 2.11 p.m. Sakari. Okay, bet. 4.37 p.m. Sakari, none still. 4.37 p.m. Chance starting my game. I'll check halftime. 4.38 p.m. Sakari. Okay, have fun. Good luck. At 9.06 p.m., Pimp named Slickback created the group Pimp named KT3 Twin. A third contact was now added to the chat using the telegram name Trey. So there are three people communicating in the chat now. Sakari, Chance, and Trey. 9.08 p.m. Chance to Sakari. Hey, wake your bill up. 9.08 p.m. Sakari to Chance. L-M-A-O, I'm O-T-O. 9.08 p.m. Chance to Sakari. It's time. 9.09 p.m. Chance to Group. This my dog who know dem folks. 
9.10 p.m. chance to group, run the plan by him so he can relay it. Folks ready. 9.10 p.m. Sakari to group, bet. 9.12 p.m. Sakari to group. You can have Shoddy pull up to whatever area you'll think is best. Get WhatsApp or something and I'll give you her number to add her on. Pretend to be a trick and have her come to wherever you at and get her when she show up. 9.13 p.m. Sakari to group. Whatever day will work. Just let me know so I can tell her when the trick trying to see her, if possible. 9.14 p.m. Trey to group. Ite bet. 9.14 p.m. Chance to group tonight, if possible, right? 9.14 p.m. Trey to group. Yeah, let me check in on them real quick. 9.15 p.m. Trey to group, but it green though, fasho. 9.15 p.m. Trey to group, so y'all want her chipped or just the sh took. 9.15 p.m. Chance to group. Coffin emoji. 9.16 p.m. Sakari to group. I don't know if tonight, I ain't tell her anything yet so I don't know if she will be ready. But if not tonight, then tomorrow is cool. I don't know. You just let me know. 9.16 p.m. Sakari to group. And yeah, nah, she gotta. Two hands making peace signs and a dove emoji. 9.31 p.m. Sakari to group. Let me know so I can set the play on that to get her wherever shippers need her at. December 3, 2023, 3.49 a.m. Sakari to group. Well, how it looking? 5.22 a.m. Trey to group. Trying to find a ghost emoji, gun emoji. 4.22 a.m. Trey to group. The homie not answering. Been hitting him since 3.03. 8.12 a.m. Chance to group. He needs some cheese to put some fi under his ass. From this point onward, detectives only had messages from Chance which means Sakari was deleting her messages as soon as they were sent so they didn't sync. And they were no longer communicating in the group since Trey and his men wouldn't do the devious deed. Now we won't be able to see what Sakari is saying, unless Chance reacts to the message such as hearting it. December 4, 2023, 1.01 p.m. Chance, responding to something Sakari said. My fault for not being a reliable source. The homies I know that got hit is beyond green light time. That's the only reason I hit him. We don't pump fake over here. 1.07 p.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said. He said the n*** slow getting back to him this morning. And then this morning said he can't do it. 1.08 p.m. Chance to Sakari. I called the family in the morning and broke down how effortless it would be. All the little ins and outs. I told him, ask the dude and any of his homies how much it would cost because it's an easy bread for real, for real. 1.14 p.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said, I'm not saying do it yourself, but if it's that easy, why not knock it out? This was the perfect time for Chance to back out instead of getting annoyed, but he missed it. 1.14 p.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said, just curious. 1.39 p.m. Chance to Sakari, hold up. Have you already linked with Shawty? Like, while well, she been out there. At this time, Chance wasn't yet in Las Vegas. He got there at 4 p.m. 1.41 p.m., Chance responding to something Sakari said. Need to get that bee drunk and mix rat poison or some in her drink. 1.41 p.m., Chance. 100 emoji. Reacting to Sakari's text. I seen her for a few minutes, but I see the energy for sure. 1.42 p.m., Chance to Sakari OD her ass. 2.32 p.m. Chance to Sakari. It's hella ways to off AMF. 2.32 p.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said. That's if the hit is fall through the floor. 2.42 p.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said, shaking my head. 5.01 p.m. Chance to Sakari, you got gun emoji? 5.36 p.m. Chance. Laughing face emoji. Reacting to Sakari's text, like my friend Trina come and beat her ass too. 5.40 p.m. Chance to Sakari. I can snap her neck or just strangle the bee. 5.44 p.m. Chance to Sakari. If you get a nice little thick piece of rope or some sturdy, I can do it from the back seat. Like how killers do it in the movies. 5.48 p.m. Chance. Heart emoji. Reacting to Sakari's text. I got a house we can do it at. 5.48 p.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said. It's green. 6.23 p.m. Chance. Heart emoji. Reacting to Sakari's text. And then what MF Fierce finna do with her, I can maybe put. 
6.24 p.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said. You, my twin. You'll learn one day. 6.25 p.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said. Heart emoji. December 5, 2023, 9.40 p.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said. I... 9.44 p.m. Chance. Heart emoji. Reacting to Sakari's text. She posting an ed you can hit her on there. 9.44 p.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said. Bin had a text now number. 11.05 p.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said. What's the number? 11.06 p.m. Chance. Heart emoji. Reacting to Sakari's text, tell her an hour for 1K, and then possibly longer. 11.08 p.m. Chance to Sakari hit her. At this point, Chance sent the message to Morena, which read, if possible, I was thinking 1K, for like an hour and then possibly longer, depending on how the vibe is good, wink face emoji, to which Morena replied, that's perfect, the vibe is great. 11.14 p.m. Chance, heart emoji, reacting to Sakari's text, I'ma use a few other numbers. December 6, 2023, 1.18 a.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said, been done. I do this for real. Smiley face emoji. 1.46 a.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said. Yeah, get her on board lol. Keep talking about the shit I'm into. 2 a.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said. Daw. My acting skills are beyond superb. At this point, Chance and Sakari are traveling with Morena and communicating with each other regarding Morena. And she had no idea. They murdered Morena shortly after at around 2.45 a.m., ditched her, and got back to the M. Resort at 6.05 a.m. 10.03 a.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said and calmly answer them. They only know what you tell them. This is Chance helping Sakari with what to say should the police contact her. 10.11 a.m. Chance to Sakari. You got this, boo. This the post-game interview. Just smile and wave. Smiley face emoji, hand waving emoji. 10.41 a.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said. I already deleted that account and the app. 11.13 a.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said. And be quick. We about to take off in a few minutes. 11.17 a.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said. Done. 11.30 a.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said, trying to calm her. She ill. 11.31 a.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said, but I, I'm a hit you when I land. 11.44 a.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said that wouldn't be a bad look. 11.47 a.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said, you just gotta find the way to word that she be posting these ads to meet up with random dudes for money has to calmly get thrown into the convo. Police go know what's really up. It's Vegas. She effed around and got kidnapped. She was with you till such and such time. Then the guy she was supposed to go meet with called her an Uber, and she left. That was the last time I saw her last night. 11.49 a.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said. If you report your side of the story, has to be airtight up till the time she left you. Sakari reported Morena missing at around 2.25 p.m., so this must be what her and Chance were discussing. 11.50 a.m. Chance, continuing to coach Sakari, if they ask you, well, where were you guys at prior to her getting in the Uber? 11.50 a.m. Chance, 100 emoji, reacting to Sakari's text, bro, he threatening to go to my sister house hell. Sakari is referring to Morena's boyfriend, Tremaine. He knew that Morena was meeting with Sakari, yet Sakari is back and Morena is not, and her location is turned off. 11.52 a.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said. And who is the man? Chance doesn't seem to know the ins and outs of Sakari's world, only what she tells him. And she is not telling him the whole truth. 11.53 a.m. Chance continuing to coach Sakari. Cops say, so ma'am, does the man that you know that you were going to meet up with lives at that address? 11.54 a.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said, and yeah, you gotta move, you sister. Can't even risk that shit. 
11.56 a.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said. Yeah, we gonna get through this. 2.05 p.m. Chance to Sakari. Any news? 4.39 p.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said. They gonna keep tripping. At this point, Chance is referring to Marina's boyfriend Tremaine, who I think is her pimp, and her longtime childhood friend Garrett, who I think is her boyfriend's pimp partner. They are both hounding Sakari, who I think is her boyfriend's top prostitute, because Marina, who was scheduled to be back by 9 a.m., had not been back, and it was getting later and later. 5.18 p.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said, and that one crib we was near ain't have a ring. In other words, the authorities won't find out what happened to Morena, and if they don't, neither will Tremaine and Garrett. 5.20 p.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said in a team meeting right now. 6.02 p.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said, and they'll get nothing. It was 2 a.m. at the end of the cul-de-sac. You have a common-looking bend, so it's not like they'd immediately be able to identify the car. 6.03 p.m. Chance to Sakari and my bad. Just got back to my room. 6.46 p.m. Chance responding to something Sakari said. Time stamps are key. Key emoji. Now authorities had so much to go on, they began calling Sakari on December 8th. But she would not pick up or return their call, and because they had so much evidence, they were able to secure an emergency pen authorization and went and got her on December 13th. They arrested her for first-degree kidnapping and theft for a Rolex watch she had in her possession that authorities realized was reported stolen by one Gregory back in February of 2023. Do you receive a complaint this morning charging you with theft? Yes. Have you already hired an attorney? Not yet. Can you to post bail? Yes. Yeah. Because of my other okay. Sakari told them some truths mixed in with lies, but it was not long before authorities figured out her lies. She told them Morena left the double date appointment they were on and went in an Uber to another date. But when authorities check with Uber for that one mile radius, they confirmed what they already suspected. Uber did not pick up Morena that night. The authorities were able to access the account holder of that text now number to reveal it was none other than Chance Comanche. So on December 14th, they arrested Chance and charged him with first-degree kidnapping. Instead of the basketball court, former Stockton Kings player Chance Comanche found himself in a different court, a Sacramento County courtroom accused of murder. Wearing a jail-issued orange jumpsuit, the 27-year-old waived his extradition to Nevada to face charges of murder and conspiracy to commit murder in the killing of 23-year-old Morena Rogers. Comanche and 19-year-old Sakari Harnden are accused of planning Rogers' murder in early December. In the police arrest warrant, Comanche told detectives Harnden is an ex-girlfriend he met online a year and a half ago. In a confession to police, Comanche said he was texting the victim pretending to be a trick and wanting to meet up for sex. He said once in the car, Rogers agreed to have her hands zip-tied. He says he used an HDMI cord to strangle her, and Harnden joined in and used her hands, strangling the victim together. They put her body in a ditch in the desert outside of Las Vegas, covering her remains with rocks. The arrest warrant shows the pair tried to find someone else to kill Rogers first, even offering $3,000. In text messages from December 2nd, Harnden wanted updates throughout the day. He texted, I told my dog the whole plan. He's just waiting to run it by them. He also wrote, he already hit him, just waiting for them to hit back. And to clarify, Comanche texted, so y'all want her chipped or just the expletive took? Then he used a coffin emoji. He also texted he was trying to find a ghost gun using emojis. Detectives say no one responded, so the pair decided to kill Rogers themselves. Some supporters of Comanche attended the court hearing, but didn't say anything. Goldstein, the confession that came out through court documents are is pretty damning. Do you have anything to say about that? We really have nothing to say. We're going to let the courts deal with it. Okay, We're going to deal with it. We're going to deal with it in Nevada. Thank you. So Mr. Comanche, do you understand the charges against you? Okay. He almost wet his pants when they showed him his text messages planning Morena's murder. Yes, authorities checkmated him with the evidence they had, and Chance had no option but to begin singing like a bird. 
He told them everything, including where to find Morena's body, pinpointing the exact location on the map they presented him. The authorities then went to the location on December 15th and found a body in a ditch covered under some rocks, and the coroner's office later confirmed it was indeed Morena's remains. The video we're about to see is a 23-year-old Morena Rogers right before she was kidnapped and buried in a Henderson neighborhood last December. These are the final moments of Morena Rogers' life, caught on surveillance video, now the center of the investigation into our two alleged killers. I want to make sure you understand and agree with that. 27-year-old Chance Comanche, a former NBA G League basketball player, and his girlfriend, 19-year-old Sakari Harmden, both facing murder charges. Police say Comanche and Harmden killed Rogers by strangling her and then burying her body. The photos from the grand jury showing a rocky, undeveloped lot near a suburban community near Gibson and Horizon Ridge. The scene where Rogers body was found covered in large rocks eventually revealing Rogers bloodied and stripped never before seen surveillance video showing Rogers with Harden both walking inside and out of a Las Vegas liquor store Rogers dressed in a jean jacket and white pants a Metro police report shows Harden and Rogers were both sex workers Rogers thought she and Harden were going on a double date to sell sex but instead Comanche pretended to be the client a security camera at a local grocery store showing Comanche and Harden hours after the death of Rogers Together, Metro detectives say Comanche confessed to the murder. Texts between Comanche and Harden show a conversation before Roger's death discussing how they should kill someone, asking if they would strangle her or use a knife and a baseball bat. And according to grand jury documents, Comanche had initially tried to find someone to kill her instead. Sakari and Chance were then charged with open murder, meaning it will later be decided what degree of murder they will be charged with, be it first, second, voluntary manslaughter or involuntary manslaughter. And since this murder was premeditated and well-documented, there is no doubt they will be charged with first-degree murder, face trial, found guilty, and pay for their horrendous crime. One can only imagine the horror Morena experienced when she realized what was about to happen to her and how there was no way out. The pain she felt as her life was slowly snuffed out of her sitting on that seat with her arms bound and someone she trusted and called friend, sitting on top of her squeezing the remaining life out of her. Chance is the biggest loser here. He had no dog in this fight. It didn't concern him, wouldn't affect him. Yet he risked his life for a girl he knows is a prostitute, participating in murdering someone who did nothing to him. All the investments his parents made in him was all for naught sending him to great schools, taking him to practices, being on the road with him, showing up to games. His mama was so proud. And his dad. Happy birthday, Chance. You made this Easter and every day a special day just being my son. Thanks for making your mother proud. Now he has brought shame to his family. So disappointing. As for Morena's boyfriend Tremaine, he told investigators he was Morena's boyfriend and he drove her to Las Vegas with the intent of engaging in prostitution, which is corroborating what Morena's longtime friend Garrett told police, as he was along for the ride as well. But ladies, if your man drive you anywhere to engage in prostitution or even have knowledge you're selling yourself and goes along with it, he's not your man, he's your pimp. It doesn't matter if you're not turning over your money to him after each gig, he's still benefiting in some way. If he's driving your car that you license, insure and maintain to go about his business, he's benefiting. If he's living in the home that you're paying for, he's benefiting. If he's eating the food that you stock in your home, he's benefiting. He's enjoying all that, and he won't have to give you money because you're already making good money selling yourself. He's complicit because he's benefiting. And as for Sakari, I'm not sure what to say about her. The pimps caught her at an early age, and once you get in that pimp prostitution sex trafficking web, it is near impossible to get out. Not only do they go through hell mentally and physically, but they are often threatened that anyone or anything they loved will be destroyed if they do not obey and do as they are told. She has no doubt been through a lot to the point where she seems to now be promoted to head prostitute and is now in charge of the women to book their appointments. See to it that they follow through and punish or report them if they get out of hand. With the threat being against their beloved family, 
They will not try to leave so they are trapped in that world while moving among family and friends who have no idea the turmoil they are experiencing on the inside. Protect your children at all cost. The recruiting begins when the girls are teens and because they threaten to take out their moms, dads, or siblings if they ever tell anyone, you will not know because they will not tell you. You will see them acting strange or different from the way they used to act, but they will not let you in no matter how hard you try to question them and figure it out. Even in school it happens at times where kids are recruiting other kids. Pay attention to your children and be ready to intervene early while being careful. The earlier you catch it and intervene, the better chance you'll have of getting them away before they become caught up and possibly becoming one of the pimp's best prostitutes because she is in demand and brings the pimp lots of money. The pimps are ruthless and will take out anyone who interferes with their money. Marena was a victim before she became a victim, a victim of pimp prostituting and sex trafficking. She loved and trusted some people she met who got her caught in a web. And it was that love and trust that caused her life to be snatched away from her at just 23 years old in the most calculating, cold and callous way. May she make it into heaven and find peace in the afterlife, though she joked about going to hell. And may her family find strength as they untangle Morena's life uncovering all that transpired and in the end get the justice they deserve. What would you have done if you know you've rat out someone and they are mad at you, yet they invite you on a private excursion and they are driving? Think about it, then share in the comments. And please like, share, and subscribe for more videos. Thanks for tuning in. Until next time, stay safe out there. And remember, trust no one. Jake Chapman spoke with a close friend of Morena's and is at the live desk. Jake, you learned that the victim worked in Bellevue. A heartbreaking situation for that friend. He tells me she worked there for a little bit and that she would always put others before herself. And she says just how all of this has happened still doesn't make sense as he and many others continue to process this all. It doesn't feel real. To Garrett Comer, Morena Rogers. Genuine. Loving, concerning, far from being self-centered. Was more than just a good friend. You know, she really got me through a lot of dark times in my life. He says earlier this month, they decided to take a trip down to Las Vegas for a fun getaway. And the last person he says he saw Morena with was this person, 19-year-old Sakari Harnden. This is a person that, you know, looked me in my eye when I was dropping Morena off, saying I'll make sure she's all right. And he tells me not only were they friends, but Marina took Sakari in several years ago. And Marina like looked at her like a sister, took care of her, clothed her, fed her. Nearly two weeks after she was reported missing, Las Vegas police found Marina's body in a desert outside Henderson, Nevada. And detectives believe both Harnden and G League basketball player Chance Comanche are responsible for her disappearance and death. It's really sad to see all of these all these events unfold. Yet with this discovery, friends and family still have so many questions. So I just don't understand what the motive or the reason is for any of this.